I recently crowned the iPad mini as the best iPad ever and didn't really give the iPad Pro a shot. So let's put the spotlight on the 11 inch iPad Pro and see what kind of powerhouse device it really is. Let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to give the iPad Pro its day and talk about specs and what makes this a great iPad. But before we begin, like this video if you found it useful and be sure to subscribe to be notified when I post new how-tos and reviews. Alright, let's talk about the 11 inch iPad Pro. The iPad Pro comes in both 11 inch and 12.9 inch models. Currently the 11 inch is the 4th generation and the 12.9 inch is the 6th generation. Both have M2 chips. The 11 inch is a liquid retina display, but the 12.9 inch is a liquid retina XDR display. They both have a 12 megapixel wide rear camera and 12 megapixel ultra wide front camera. Center stage is available on both. USB-C with support for Thunderbolt is on both models. They both work with Face ID instead of Touch ID and have four speaker audio. Finally, they both support Wi-Fi 6E, 5G, and the second generation Apple Pencil, as well as the newer USB-C Apple Pencil. The Pro iPad models come in space gray or silver, and that's kind of a bummer. If you go with the regular iPad, you get four color options. I think there should be more color options on the Pro, like maybe add Midnight as an option in the future. The design of the iPad has come such a long way from the earlier versions. I really like this new industrial design and I hope it sticks around for a while. You know, when you look at the boxy edges, you wouldn't think it'd be comfortable, but it's not bad to hold at all. This size iPad used to be in a 10.5 inch form factor with a different design. When they moved to an 11 inch display, I thought it was really going to change the size, but they kept it very similar, which is really awesome. And I will say I was not a fan of the smart covers, but I do like them now. I didn't want the back covered, but the cover is so thin it's not an issue and does offer the extra protection. They do need more color options though. I'd love to see a leather option from Apple, but looks like that's no longer possible. Maybe a fine woven smart cover? If I'm sitting on the couch, for me the comfortable device is still the mini, but I feel like I can be more productive on the 11 inch iPad. Okay, let's talk keyboards for the iPad Pro. If I pair up the iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard, for me, I feel like I've got a rugged laptop. My MacBook Pro feels too delicate sitting outside exposed to the elements, but the iPad feels sealed off from dust and anything else that the wind blows on it. Then you've got the Magic Keyboard Folio that is only compatible with the regular iPad, and finally the Smart Keyboard Folio, which I have tried but I didn't like. I actually used the Smart Keyboard Folio before they released the Magic Keyboard, and found it okay when I used it on my lap, but it wasn't ideal. The floating design of the Magic Keyboard makes me feel like I have more room on the keyboard and my hands are not so close to the screen like on the Smart Keyboard Folio. Plus, the Smart Keyboard Folio does not have a trackpad. But there is a con to the Magic Keyboard in that it does add some bulk. If you want to travel light, this almost adds enough weight to just take a MacBook with you instead. I'd also recommend something like Logitech's Keys to Go. This is a super slim sealed Bluetooth keyboard that travels well with any iPad model. If you don't want to spend the money on an attached keyboard or you just want to switch between iPads or other devices, this is very compact. But just be aware that it's a flat keyboard so it's not going to be the most comfortable thing you've ever used and it works with a micro USB cable to charge it. All right, let's move over to iPad OS. Now I didn't spend much time here with the mini but I do want to talk about it with the iPad Pro. Whether 11 inch or 12.9 inch iPad, the Pro models are more computer replacements, offer more keyboard options, and have the screen real estate to do more. So I think it's only fair to get into the software a little and talk about Stage Manager. Multitasking gets an introduction with the feature Stage Manager, and I will say that I can get quite a bit done on my iPad throughout the day. I can even connect my iPad Pro up to an external monitor and really get more of a desktop experience. But software, oh software. Some iPad OS apps just don't offer the same experience that I can get on my MacBook Pro. For example, if I want to create something in Adobe Express, I can do that on my iPad, but Adobe Express is different on my iPad than on my Mac. Even more so, if I create something on my iPad, I can't get to it on my Mac and vice versa. I think the same holds true for more apps that have this same issue. 
Overall, I think iPad OS can do a lot, and for me, it can actually be a desktop replacement with minimal frustration. But it needs a little more refinement, and honestly, I'm not sure we'll ever get there. All right, that's my take on the 11-inch iPad Pro. Both this device and the Mini have their places. I think the king of content consumption and travel is the iPad Mini, but I do think the iPad Pro models can be desktop replacements and good for travel when you don't want to lug around a big laptop or if you have a desktop machine at home. Still, there's some work to be done on iPad OS, and I hope we see some development on it in 2024. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and we'll talk soon.